Hi there, my name is Allie Evans and I created the History of Mules animation uh, and if you haven't seen it, I'll link it down below that way you can go check that out because uh, that's what we're talking about today. So to begin, uh, one of the first things I had to decide was exactly like what the format I wanted, what format I wanted to use, how exactly I was going to do that. So uh, before this, in 2015, I made an animation called the history of nail polish. This was kind of a sequel to that. I really like making animations out of paper, so I wanted to stick with that if I could. Um, and then one thing that I wanted to try that was going to be different was the history of nail polish. Um, it was shot from an overhead rig. On a, it was all flat, um, and there was really no depth in it. And so for this one, I wanted to make everything stand up. That was a challenge, and it was probably more of a challenge than I realized going in, but that's what I wanted to do. So that was the plan. Over the summer, I had two weeks that I had allotted to making everything for the video. Right now, we have started production on the history of mules. I started yesterday. I want to actually do a little bit before I actually started like filming, just to prove to myself that I was actually going to do this. And um, what I started working on is letters. Well, uh, I was kind of surprised. This has turned into like a sewing project, pretty much. So I wanted all of the pieces of like the mules and the people and stuff to be able to like articulate, but I'm also standing it up this time instead of having it laid down flat. And so I needed a way to put joints. If you can see right there, I have put a hole through it and then used thread to make like a little joint. I did enlist the help of my aunt to help uh, cut some of the paper. Alright, so I'm here at my main paper cutter helper's house because we've got some things. We need some certain colors. We need tan and gray and some more blue. And so I'll work on those today. There's all the papers. I've got so many magazines new magazines that we haven't cut out from yet. Here's my paper cutter helper. Thank you. Hmm? No. <laughs> um, so what I would normally do is start with a really big sheet and then I would uh, cut the smaller stuff out of it. Well, we've got a sheet of gray done. This was an essay I wrote for my scholarship. So that's kind of funny that I've I've saved all this paper. This paper is all from high school. For reusing, recycling. It's eleven o'clock. We just now got finished. We're both. We got a two by two sheet of gray and tan and blue. We got started at five this afternoon. Kind of tired now. We almost finished a whole bottle of glue. Almost. <laughs> There's all of our magazines. After those two weeks of making everything, um, I had a bit of a hiatus. Um, I went, I had, I was shooting a lot of weddings during that time, and I knew I was not going to have time to, like, actually be able to work on this. So, what I ended up doing was, um, I just, I had a break for about a month or two, and then I picked it back up. I'm back from the hiatus. <laughs> There were still a few more things I knew I needed to make, um, and so I finished up doing that. Before I could start shooting, I had to record the voiceover that was really my, that was my guide. I recorded the voiceover, cut it down, and then I went through and uh, counted frames or converted the time to frames. Um, I shot uh, at 12 frames per second. Um, so there were 12 frames in every second of this. This was also, um, this was a time crunch for sure. So I had allotted, I, it was like a week and a half or two weeks, um, somewhere around that. And then I had a wedding on a Friday. So I had to make sure that it was done because I used the camera that I sh shot the animation on and the lens, I had to use it for the wedding. So I had to make sure that I had everything done by that point, which was just crazy because animation always takes longer than what you think, always. And here I'm in here working on 
animation and what I've been finding right now is that the rigging is going to be quite difficult which I had anticipated it was going to not like it wasn't going to be really easy but um it's going to be a challenge to say the least okay so I'm back with the update it's been a couple of days since I have filmed anything uh, just because things have kind of changed my plans have kind of changed a little bit so originally I just started shooting and it was going okay but I felt like I needed to actually set the scenes up before I actually started shooting after I'd already kind of shot like the first little bit of the intro um, and so that's what I've been working on the past two days um, there's still things that I'm having to make which is why it's taking so long um, so anyway today is Monday the whole thing needs to be done Thursday which means I need to be shooting like soonish in life like today um, but anyway I'm only halfway through setting my scenes up um, but hopefully that will go a little bit faster I was sitting at my royalty scene uh, that's kind of what it looks like. You got the crowds on either side. But uh, I, just, I felt like it needed some more in it. So uh, I've been working on making some trees. There's one tree. Got another tree. Whoa. I almost think I could do with one more tree. So you go. That's what the camera's kind of seeing. But I don't know if it's worth me actually making another one. Cause it's going to take a long time. So we might just go with this. Alright, well we've run into a problem. I'm still just staging stuff and my mule's leg has come off. I've been using Christmas tree hangers to rig a lot of a little piece of paper and I need to find some more. Well, I couldn't find the box of hangers, but I found some ornaments that have some on there, so I'm just going to take them off of there. I got four, but I know where there's more if I need them. <laughs> Alright, it's Tuesday night. I'm finally ready to shoot my first frames. Praise the Lord. Okay, we've had a false start. I just got started and then I realized that it was focused. Just like, it was too close. The focus was too close. So, we are going to uh, we'll try it again. So one of the uh, more interesting shots, one that I thought was cool and actually worked out like it wasn't that bad, I thought it was going to be really difficult to do, um, was the Bible with the magnifying glass. Um, so if you see it, the magnifying glass goes across and then you can actually see the words and before that it's just like little scribbles. My mom actually had this really great idea that we could just copy the writing that I had made out and cut them out on the paper that way. And that worked super, super well. Um, and so you get that look of you're just reading across it, you know? So that's probably one of my favorite shots. Oh, another kind of interesting scene was 40 acres and a mule. So that was one I had gotten to the point I had like, I think I had one and a half or two days left. I had ended up, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get it done. Um, Unless I really like I was gonna have to just stay up first of all um, How long ago was two o'clock yesterday? 21 hours 21 hours? Ain't no way Well 21? Oh Two to two is 12 and 12 plus 9. No Yeah, no. it's not that. Yeah. Not quite Yeah, it is. No. It's not a clock. 10, 8 to 9, 17 hours. 17. We're going 17 hours straight. Because it's got to get done. And we're and growing something. I was trying to just kind of get through it as quickly as I could, but then I realized I didn't have enough frames. <laughs> and so what I ended up doing was just kind of improvising. And I took um, some little clay and I just put, like, I had it like, there were little. Uh, plants growing after the mule had went through and like plowed it so I was really proud of myself to be able to like just come up with some sort of solution whatever it was So a couple things.
things I learned while I was doing it. Uh, first of all, those uh, little meals that I made that I thought were just so ingenious. Um, I mean, they probably still are. Like, I don't know how I so would have done it, but um, they were a little difficult to work with. And over time, it got worse. So, like the brown mule in particular, I used it uh, so many times, a lot more than the gray mule. And so whenever uh, we were getting towards the end, I was using both of them. I really like, you could tell the difference because like the gray one, it would still kind of hold its form. The brown one, literally like one of the legs tore off of it. And it was better than having to make like 10 different meals. Like uh, it was better to reuse them than to, um, to make a whole bunch of different ones. Another kind of interesting scene was the borax scene. Um, and so in that one, I knew that I wanted to sprinkle some sort of like white powder over my box. Of course, you know, borax, that's what borax looks like. So that was the goal. Um, and so I told my mom, I was like, hey, whatever you can find that like I can use, it doesn't really matter to me, but just something that will look like white powder. And so um, she was like, oh yeah, I've got this stuff. It's like this body stuff, but it's got like a lid where it will sprinkle really nicely. And I was like, that'll be great. Um, but I, we didn't take into account that like it had like a really intense like floral rose smell. Oh my gosh, this stuff, it smells so bad. I'm gonna get a gas mask. Oh, let's pause. I'm gonna go get a mask. This is better, this is a little bit more tolerable. I'm going to go get a breath, I need a breath. This stuff is horrific, horrific. Okay. Oh, break, 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 break. I can smell it from the hallway. This is so bad. Y'all yeah, think I'm about over it. I don't think I'm done. I'm done. And then I had to like dispose of it and that actually went really, really well because it could have just gone everywhere. And I think like I, I didn't have any powder really anywhere. All that uh, dusting, I'm going to have to blow the, blow all the dust off my, oh, it's all over my camera. Five more scenes left until I'm completely done, but um, I've been awake since 1 o'clock yesterday and it's 11 o'clock now, so I've been awake for 22 hours straight working on this, so I am going to go to sleep for a little while. Okay, just got up from a seven hour nap. I'm ready to finish it. I've got four kind of scenes, five-ish scenes, four scenes. That's all we got to do. Gotta knock it out. That's it. Praise God. It's done. How about you? Amen. Yep. So the post-production on this video required a significant amount of work. Because I made everything stand up, everything had to be supported. And so the supports had to show. I've had to go through and Photoshop out all of the stuff, extra stuff. And I remember beforehand, before I started shooting, I had been watching some animation tutorials and they were like, oh, make sure that your supports do not get in your shadows. And I was like, okay, like, yeah, all right. Now that I have some supports in the shadows, I now understand why they said that because you cannot duplicate realistic shadows uh, in at least n not in a decent amount of time. On the gear side, what I used to shoot this, um, so I used a 5D Mark IV as my camera. I shot it on a 24-70 L 2.8 lens. Um, I think I shot it around 50 millimeters. I did use a small HD monitor just so I could see what I was doing because the 5D Mark IV does not have a flip out screen. I used an Aperture Amaron light, which I'm actually using to light this shot right now. It's just like an LED panel. Oh, I had a Bella Wild sh Shutter Release, which I was really excited about using. In the past when I've done animations, I've always used those. Um, but it was doing some weird like firing. It would fire without me hitting the button and it was getting annoying enough within the first scene. I was like, I can't do this. So I actually hit the button on all these, which Probably causes a little bit more shake, but 
that's the way that goes. In terms of audio recording, I use the Zoom H4n. And so the tripod I used was like the Benro, I will put it down here because I don't remember what it is. I'll, I'll list it. So it's a really, really, really heavy tripod. And so like there were times when I definitely hit the tripod and I don't think it moved. Or if it did, it didn't move very much. Okay, so that is how I made the history of mules. Thanks for watching. <laughs>